Hello, I'm David Creasy from Matrix Science. In this presentation, I'll be talking about Mascot Distiller, our application for viewing and processing raw mass spectrometry data. Most laboratories will have instruments from more than one manufacturer. The instrument data systems are necessarily complex, so there can be a steep learning curve for someone who comes into the lab and just wants to browse their data or generate peak lists. The first benefit of Mascot Distiller is that you can access all of the popular data formats from a single user interface. Another reason for developing Distiller was to produce high quality peak lists without having to constantly tweak peak detection parameters. Poor quality peak lists translate into poor quality mascot scores. Distiller is also a powerful way to review mascot search results. And, if mascot fails to get a match, you can perform de novo sequencing and interpret sequence tags for tag searches. Finally, Distiller is used for quantitation methods that require information from the raw data file, either because it is necessary to integrate the elution profile of each precursor peptide, or because the information is required for precursor peptides that were not used to trigger MSMS scans, and so are missing from the peak list. There is a separate presentation dealing with quantitation. If you are not already a distiller user, you can get a free 30-day evaluation license. Details are on our website under Products Mascot Distiller. A binary or raw file is initially opened as a new distiller project. We'll run through the supported formats in a minute. The file browse box displays some header information for the selected file. Also, this is where you can choose the processing options. You can change these later, but choosing the correct set here saves a couple of mouse clicks. Mascot Distiller supports all the mainstream data file formats. In a few cases, Distiller requires library files that are installed as part of the instrument operating system. Data files can be as simple as a single MS or MSMS scan, or they can be the most complex mixtures of dependent scans created by IDE type experiments. There are some types of data that Mascot Distiller cannot handle. For example, it wouldn't know what to do with MRM data. If the raw file contains LC MSMS data, this is the general appearance of the distiller screen. The acquisition tab on the explorer tree shows the scan structure. This is MassLinx, so each survey scan is followed by MSMS scans grouped into functions. If we were looking at, say, Excalibur triple play data or analyst data, the structure would look very different. The total iron chromatogram window is chiefly a navigational aid. The scan window displays a mass spectrum trace selected by clicking on the explorer tree or the TIC trace. At the top of the TIC and scan windows you can see a representation of the whole trace called the overview. The black area shows the portion of the trace that is currently displayed. This can be dragged or resized to make zooming and panning around the trace very easy. To process the raw data into peak lists suitable for database searching, we just use Process from the Processing menu or toolbar. We can process the current scan, the currently displayed scan range, or all scans. After processing, there is a new tab on the exploratory, Peak Lists. This shows the new data structure which will usually be different from the original acquisition structure because scans from the same precursor have been summed together. When the mouse cursor is over a peak label, we get a tooltip showing complete information about the peak. M over Z, charge, MR and area are fairly obvious. And width is the full width at the half maximum height in Daltons. Rho is the correlation coefficient, which measures the quality of the peak. Anything over 0.7 is normally a real peak and not a noise spike. The peak picking procedure 
also gives us a signal to noise ratio for each peak. And rank is just the order in which the peak was picked and selector shows that this peak was picked by the distiller library which we call MDRO from mascot data reduction object as opposed to a manually edited peak. Click on a peak list node on the explorer tree and you get a peak list window containing a grid of these values for all the peaks. This is where you could edit or delete a peak if you really wanted to. Clicking on the column headers sorts the table on that column. Having created a peak list, you might just want to save it to a file. The supported formats are mascot generic format, comprehensive, which includes all of the peak information that we were just looking at, MZ data is the XML format from the proteomics standard initiative and DTA format which is used by Sequest. So what is different about peak picking in Mascot Distiller? Conventional peak detection works by smoothing the spectrum then looking for a rising gradient which is the onset of a peak and a falling gradient at the tail of the peak. The trouble is this only works well if various parameters are set just right for the particular spectrum. If these parameters are not right, then we see either a failure to pick low intensity peaks or picking of peaks that are just baseline noise. Another common problem is selecting the carbon 13 peak instead of the smaller carbon 12 peak so that the mass is out by a full Dalton. The need to continually tweak parameters is a big headache if you want to process files automatically without looking at each spectrum. Mascot Distiller detects peaks by attempting to fit an ideal isotopic distribution to the experimental data. These are the steps in this process. Firstly, choose the most intense feature in the spectrum. Secondly, for each charge state to be considered, we calculate the shape of the isotope distribution for an average peptide at that m over z value. And for each calculated distribution, we iteratively adjust the position and peak width to obtain the best fit as measured by the correlation coefficient. We select the distribution that gives the best fit and subtract the fitted area from the spectrum. And finally, we return to step one and repeat until nothing is left but noise. So these are the advantages of mascot distiller peak detection. So hopefully the peak list contains just carbon-12 monoisotopic mass values. We're less likely to get a carbon-13 peak by mistake and we automatically get the charge state, total area and quality statistics for every peak. So we don't need smoothing or filtering. And finally, there should be no need to tweak parameters constantly. Of course, nothing is perfect, so here are some of the weaknesses. It's significantly slower than conventional peak detection. It can get confused by certain types of isotopic labeling, for example, 50% O18. Accuracy is not so good if for any reason the isotope envelope is distorted. And it's of limited benefit if the raw data has already been centroided. Although you don't have to tweak the peak picking parameters constantly, this doesn't mean there aren't any. The point is that you can set the parameters once for a particular instrument and then leave them alone, confident that the peak detection will be consistently acceptable. Sets of peak picking parameters are stored in XML text files and can be viewed and modified using the processing options dialog. This has five tabs and we don't have time in this presentation to go into detail. Just press F1 when this dialog is displayed in Distiller and the online help will open up with the complete information. The first tab deals with MS or survey scans. Mascot Distiller works best on profile data and there is an unavoidable loss of information when data have been badly centroided. However, converting centroided data back to profile data and reprocessing may yield some improvement. 
the uncentroiding frame specifies how centroided data should be converted back into Gaussian peak profiles. Some profile data are compressed by dropping runs of zero intensity data points. Before Distiller can process these scans, it is necessary to replace the missing points. This is called regridding and is also used when spectra with non nonlinear mass scales have to be transformed onto a common m over z axis prior to summing. For both uncentroiding and regridding, it is very important to choose a reasonable value for data points per dalton. This needs to be sufficient points to faithfully represent the peak shape. A common rule of thumb is that you need 8 points to accurately define a peak shape. However, the higher this value, the longer peak detection will take, so don't choose an unnecessarily high value just for the sake of it. Aggregation is the grouping together of equivalent spectra so that they can be summed into a single spectrum. For MS data, the choices are none and some. When none is chosen, a separate peak list will be created for each MS scan. When some is chosen, all of the scans will be summed prior to peak detection. Maximum charge state should be chosen carefully. Processing time increases in proportional to this number. More importantly, you should only look for high charge states in data with adequate mass resolution. If the instrument resolution means that all charge states, or say three, are unresolved, then it is impossible to determine from the gross width of a peak window whether the peak is charge state six or seven. Any peak list containing less than the minimum number of peaks will be discarded. If the file contains LCMSMS, it is important to set this value to 1, because the survey scan with only one decent peak is still important. Conversely, when processing an MS data file for peptide mass fingerprinting, this value should be set higher, because it is unlikely you will want to search a spectrum that is less than, say, 10 peaks. MSMS processing parameters apply to all MSMS scans, whether a single scan, a series of scans, or MSMS scans within an LC MSMS dataset. Some controls are identical to those on the MS processing tab. These controls have been duplicated on both tabs because instruments may have different resolution capabilities for MS and MSMS. The aggregation method choices for MSMS are none and time domain. None is only useful for files containing a series of MSMS scans. It is not applicable to structured LC MSMS data. When none is chosen, a separate peak list will be created for each MSMS scan. Time domain is invariably the correct choice for DDA LC MSMS data. Time domain means that precursor mass and charge information can be derived from survey scans and that MSMS scans from a common precursor should be summed together according to the rules on the time domain tab. The precursor charge frame describes the most common decision paths for assigning precursor charge state. And charge defaults are used when it is not possible to determine the precursor charge state. If ignore singly charged precursors is checked, spectra from singly charged precursors will be discarded. This is useful for electrospray analysis of triptych peptides, where singly charged precursors are often noise or non-peptide contaminants. The choices for precursor M over Z is simpler because it is not possible to have a default M over Z. The precursor M over Z tolerance setting determines the maximum difference allowed between the precursor M over Z value in the file and that redetermined by distiller. The most common problem with precursor M over Z is that the instrument data system has taken the carbon-13 peak so the precursor mass can easily be out by one Dalton. If the survey scans are high resolution, there may be multiple potential precursors in the window selected for MSMS. If your mascot server is version 2.5 or later, you can specify a maximum number of the most intense precursors to be picked. This can give multiple matches to chimeric spectra and is very useful when the bulk of the peaks in the MSMS spectrum actually come from a precursor that is not the most intense in the tolerance window. 
maximum charge state for fragments can be specified or set to the precursor charge. For the purposes of creating a peak list for a mascot search, the correct setting depends on whether you are outputting MSMS peaks as M over Z or MH plus values. A conventional peak list contains M over Z values, and the maximum charge state that mascot looks for is 2 plus. Hence, there is no point in spending time looking for higher charge states. However, if your data definitely includes fragment ions with higher charge states, you should choose to output fragment ions as MH plus values and check Use Precursor Charge as Maximum. For LCMSMS data, the usual setting for multi-scan data will be to use time domain processing. The parameters on the time domain tab then control how MSMS scans will be summed and filtered. These settings are all fairly conventional. Spectra from very small peptides have no value in database searching because such short sequences can be expected to occur by chance in a large database. A setting of 700 Daltons for a minimum precursor mass will generally be appropriate. The upper limit on a precursor mass in mascot is 16,000 Daltons, so there's little point in adding larger peptides to the peak list. Both precursor M over Z tolerance for grouping and max number of intermediate scans are critical parameters for accurate time domain processing. Precursor M over Z tolerance for grouping requires a good estimate of how the mass spectrometer mass precision might drift during a run. Don't set this parameter too wide because you may end up averaging together spectra from different precursors. Maximum intermediate time or maximum intermediate scan count require an estimate of the quality of the chromatography. Might you expect to see the same peptide loot over a period of 10 seconds or 10 minutes or what? Note that scans in this context refer to survey scans. In a mass links file, function 1 might be the survey scan while functions 2, 3 and 4 might be MSMS scans. Only the function 1 scans would count towards the total number of intermediate scans allowed to divide a potential group of MSMS scans. Some knowledge of how the acquisition method was configured will be helpful in choosing an appropriate value. If use intermediate scan count where possible is cleared, the maximum intermediate scan count is disabled. If there is more than one raw file in the distiller project, then Maximum intermediate scan count is ignored even if the checkbox is checked because scan count has no meaning from one file to another. Setting minimum number of scans in group requires some knowledge of how the acquisition method was configured. If the method was attempting to acquire 8 scans from each precursor, then having a single scan in the file for a particular precursor could be a good indication that the scan was triggered on a noise spike. If this is not the case, then setting this value to more than one could be dangerous because valid spectra might be discarded. Although MassLynx usually acquires multiple MSMS scans off each precursor, this is not true for other instruments. If you are using an acquisition method with an exclusion list and only expect a single spectrum from each precursor, you will want to suppress grouping. To do this, clear Use Intermediate Scan Count and set the maximum intermediate time to zero and set the minimum number of scans to one. Collapse MSN scans into precursor causes the peaks in, say, an MS3 scan to be added into the peak list of the parent MS2 scan. This seems to us to be the best way to make use of MSN data in a database search. There are separate tabs for MS and MSMS peak picking parameters with almost identical controls. This is useful for a hybrid instrument where the characteristics of the two scan types may be very different. If the same settings can be used for both, there is a checkbox on the MSMS peak picking tab for same as MS peak picking. The peak picking code performs a least squares fit between a calculated isotope cluster and each candidate peak returning the correlation coefficient, which is a measure of the similarity between peak shapes. It ranges from 1 for perfect correlation to 0 for no correlation. Good fits to strong peaks will normally give correlation coefficients of 0.95 or better. 
weak peaks will generally give lower correlation coefficients and a cutoff of 0.7 seems to work well for all types of data. S over N stands for signal to noise ratio. Minimum signal to noise needs to be set empirically for each type of instrument, though not for each data set. Something between 1 and 10 will usually be appropriate. This is the parameter to set using some typical spectra. Minimum and maximum peak M of Z are system limits and should be set well outside the range expected for useful data. The peak width settings are coarse ones and do not need any fine tuning. Minimum peak width and maximum peak width are safe conservative limits reflecting the physics of the instrument. Expected peak width is a starting point for iteration. The peak width will start here and potentially could go to either limit in the search for the best fit for a peak. When reject width outliers is checked, a robust non-parametric routine is applied to detect and remove peak width outliers. It can improve the quality of the peak list in some circumstances. Baseline correction should be checked if the spectra have a significant baseline liftoff. Generally this will be true for more the MS, but not for PSD, LCQ, QTOF, etc. If peak detection is performed on a trace with an elevated baseline, the peak list may be full of weak, broad peaks representing the signal under the baseline. A quick tip, the safe setting is to have baseline correction checked. It wastes a little processing time, but avoids the possibility of generating a bad peak list from a trace with an elevated baseline. Sometimes, the peaks in a spectrum cannot be modelled using averaging. In such cases, distiller can pick single peaks rather than try and fit a complete isotopic distribution by choosing single peak as the fit method. Maximum iterations places an upper limit on the number of detectable peaks. The limit will rarely be reached in practice. The peak picking code iterates until this limit is reached or until no significant peaks remain in the spectrum. Hence, 500 is a safe number. Setting a smaller number may reduce the overall processing time. For an eye track or TMT experiment, the ideal is to have single peak picking in the reporter iron region and isotope distribution fitting elsewhere. You can achieve this using the single peak window frame. Since we don't want this behavior for the MS scans, the checkbox for same as MS peak picking has been cleared. There are many other options dialogues in Distiller. Press F1 at any time to get context sensitive help. Two of the most important are shown here. External servers is where you select your mascot server and preferences is where you set defaults for various aspects of Distiller, such as the mascot search and de novo. The mascot distiller libraries, which provide the raw file access and peak processing, can be called by other applications, such as mascot daemon. We'll go into more detail about how this works in a later presentation. But as you can see, the import filter options are relatively simple because all the processing options are specified by simply selecting an options file. You can call the mascot distiller libraries from your own applications by purchasing a developer toolbox license. Distiller uses COM, so it can be called from most Microsoft Windows programming languages. The developer toolbox provides a uniform application programmer interface to all of the different raw file formats, greatly reducing development time. Here is an example of calling distiller from VBScript, which is a standard part of Windows. The object-oriented interface makes the code look very clean and simple. The search toolbox is a collection of tools for protein identification and characterization. So it allows you to import and display mascot search results provides manual de novo sequencing, automatic de novo sequencing, automatic sequence tag calling, and you can predict fragment ions from a peptide sequence and overlay them on an MSMS spectrum, and similarly you can predict mass values from a protein digest 
and overlay them on a spectrum. Let's see how to submit a mascot search from Distiller. You don't have to save the peak listo file, you just choose mascot search from the context menu obtained by right clicking the top node of the peak list tree. The data are loaded into a search form and the search parameters are set to defaults specified in the distiller project preferences. The form just allows you to make any last minute changes. Press submit and the form will vanish and a new explorer tab will display progress information. The tree can be used to move between multiple sets of search results. When the search is complete, the behavior depends on whether you have the search toolbox or not. If you only have the core application, the results will be displayed in a browser window. If you have the search toolbox, the results are automatically retrieved from the mascot server and displayed in Dataset Explorer. In the case of an MSMS search, each match is labeled with a peptide sequence and mascot peptide match score. When a peptide match node is selected, the peak assignments are displayed as sequence ladders. It is much easier to make a judgment about the quality of the match peaks from this kind of display than from the bitmap in the HTML results report. The mascot search results are actually displayed in two tabs. One is the peak list tab as shown here. This gives an immediate overview of all the matches to each query and might be described as a spectrum centric view. The proteins tab provides a protein centric view closely resembling the mascot peptide summary report with the peptide matches grouped into protein hits. This is a more natural arrangement if you are only interested in the significant matches or the matches assigned to a particular protein. As far as possible, the selected node is synchronized between the two tabs, making it easy to switch between the two views. The Format Options node at the top of the Proteins tree is similar to the Format Control at the top of the HTML Summary Reports. Going back to the Peak List tab, right click any match for a context menu containing relevant options such as a link out to Blast or MS Blast. The Search Toolbox includes a powerful de novo sequencing module. The score assigned to a de novo solution is similar to a mascot score. In general, these scores will be higher than you expect to see in a mascot database search because the algorithm has selected the best matching sequence from all possible sequences rather than the limited number of sequences found in any database. So you should not judge the quality of a match by applying any rule of thumb or significance threshold to the score. However, if you get the same solution by de novo and by database search using identical parameters, you should find the mascot scores are very close. You can de novo sequence a single spectrum or all of the MSMS spectra in the file. The starting point can be any MSMS GAN that has been processed to create a peak list. Right click the peak list node in Dataset Explorer and then choose de novo search or choose the de novo button from the toolbar when a sum scans node is selected. Good signal to noise and good mass accuracy are critical for successful de novo sequencing, much more so than in database searching. A garbage in, garbage out is guaranteed. In a de novo solution, a lowercase i always represents i or l, and a lowercase q represents q or k when the mass tolerance does not allow these residues to be distinguished. However, k is assumed at the C terminus of a peptide when triptych specificity applies. Ambiguity is indicated by a dash in the sequence, and the tooltip shows details of the ambiguity in square brackets using pipe symbols to separate alternatives. Note that the order of the pairs and the triplets is undefined, so that SP could also obviously be PS. Although the example shown here looks very different to the mascot database match, they are actually in perfect agreement. 
Some uncertainty is avoidable in the de novo because the search space is so very much larger. To de novo sequence a complete peak list collection, or the peak list in the currently displayed TIC range, use the context menu obtained by right clicking the root as the world node of the peak list tree. The most efficient way to de novo only those spectra that fail to give decent matches in the mascot search is to switch to the proteins tree, click on format options and choose to load the unassigned queries. Use the context menu obtained by right clicking the root node or unassigned node to de novo just the unassigned queries. The de novo solutions are added to the peak list tree and you can browse down looking for cases where the database search failed and de novo has a high score. This looks like a promising case, but how do we resolve the ambiguity? One of the most powerful checks is to run an error tolerant sequence tag search and see whether the match is a modified sequence from a known protein. We'll discuss this in the next talk. A distiller project can contain more than one raw file. Choose New Multifile Project from the File menu to invoke a file selection box. Memory Efficient Mode processes each file independently and is the most useful for most types of quantitation. Clearing this checkbox causes all data to be processed as if it was in a single file. This is mainly used for label-free quantitation, which will be discussed in a separate presentation, but can also be useful for mud pit fractions. By processing the files collectively, spectra with a similar mass and elution time from each of the files can be summed together. This removes much of the redundancy we see in mud pit search results when the raw files are processed separately. Having processed the data, and maybe perform some mascot searches and de novo sequencing, you will often want to be able to save everything in the workspace. You can do exactly that. The only thing that doesn't go into the project file is the raw file itself for space reasons. If the reference to the raw file is broken, you can easily reattach the raw file when opening a project. You can also choose to have mascot daemon save distiller project files. And finally, a few of the most frequent technical support questions. Some of the file access libraries are not fully localized. So in Windows Regional Options, you need to set the decimal separator to a period. The de novo settings are in the Preferences dialog. Most of these settings will be the same as on the Mascot Search tab. And if you don't register and save a license, Distiller is just a read-only project viewer.